Hi, this is Dr. Jason Holworth from the Hospital for Special Surgery. I'm the Director of Research for the Limb Lengthening and Complex Reconstruction Service. This surgical video is provided to help illustrate our approach for the repair of patellar tendon ruptures. This video shows the repair and recovery of a patellar tendon rupture of a 62-year-old man. The patient has given permission to be shown in the video. He tore his patellar tendon during a fall while bowling. The patient has been prepped with the right patella upwards, given tranexamic acid and antibiotics. A tourniquet was used under the drapes for this case. I'm starting here with a midline central knee incision from about 5 centimeters proximal of the patella down to the medial aspect of the tibial tubercle. It is essentially identical to a total knee incision. I cut directly through all layers of the skin and subcutaneous tissue to expose the extensor retinaculum from the quadriceps tendon, patella, and patellar tendon. Then I switched to cautery to elevate the adhered and inflamed skin and subcutaneous tissue. Again, as a full thickness layer to preserve the integrity of the skin and optimize the closure. I want to get all the way to the gutters immediately because it will give me better visibility during the surgery and I know I will eventually need to repair the retinaculum to the gutters as well. I spend some time suctioning the hematoma and continuing to free up the adhesions. I really want to keep the layers full thickness and avoid any rent in the skin or damaging the deep layers. Now that I have exposed the patellar tendon rupture, I will retract the patella and irrigate debris to further improve visibility. I then spend some time to elevate the injury itself and remove any badly injured tissue that I think will not help the healing process. The fat pad is also removed. Here I am nibbling the distal edge of the patella in order to expose fresh bleeding bone to which I will eventually repair the patellar tendon. I know that I can take a reasonable amount of bone because I want a large surface to heal and this should be quite tight as these patients tend to have a knee extension lag anyway. I also prepare the patellar tendon to remove any bone fragments and have all the ends clean and healthy. I then begin the crack house suture portion. I'm using a number two sized suture, non-absorbable braided, so it has excellent purchase and longevity to ensure the patellar tendon is supported through the healing process. I clip one end of the double sided suture to the drape above the knee so that I ensure I have plenty of length to eventually pass the suture through the patella drill holes. Here is the crack how portion. I start the needle within the substance of the tendon, then exit anteriorly. I re-enter from the side to exit anteriorly. By having the trailing suture tail hang down, I have now captured this pass. I ask my assistant to simply hold the suture steady so it does not advance. I repeat the process of entering the side of the tendon and exiting anteriorly and capturing the needle with the trailing tail.
I pass the reverse direction of the Krakow in the center of the tendon from the lateral trajectory. I again exit the tendon in the center of the tissue, cut the needle and clip the sutures to the drapes to prevent them from getting snagged. The second Krakow suture is the same concept. The three wires are then drilled through the patella to serve as guides for a cannulated drill bit. My intent is to have them nearly parallel in both AP and lateral planes, approximately evenly spaced in the central aspect of the patella, so they have excellent purchase. I am holding the patella as I drill to help reduce the wiggle of the wires. Once the drill is through the proximal cortex, I cut over the quad tendon to reach the drilled hole and spread the approach with the tonsil. I pull the drill out and insert the Hewson suture passer through the drill hole. If you can access the drill hole proximally with the Hewson, that is easier, but in this case I could not find the hole under the quad tendon, and so went from the exposed part of the tendon and pulled the Hewson strings proximally and retrieved a second suture which I then used to pull the tendon sutures proximally. This is the most medial patella hole, so I ensure I have the most medial patellar tendon suture and shuttle it through the hole. I overdrill the middle hole the same way. I pass the Hewson and shuttle the suture shuttle. I prepare to pass the two middle hole sutures, which are the lateral limb of the medial suture and the medial limb of the lateral suture. In order to not mix up my sutures, I mark the end of the lateral pair. I then repeat the drill and pass technique for the lateral suture thread. Now it is time to tie the threads together. I check the sutures are paired correctly and maximally extend the knee by placing the ankle on a bump and letting the knee sag. I have my assistant use a bone tenaculum to pull the patella distal while I pull the tendon sutures proximal into the end of the prepared patella and tie tight knots. I then tie the other pair of sutures.
It is now time to repair the retinaculum. There is substantial overlap of the tissues now, which is good. It allows me the safety of cutting some redundant tissue that looks unhealthy and still have enough overlap of healthy tissue. I repair the retinaculum with a large vicral suture such as a number one. I do the repair and running technique, one half then the other half. His skin is so thick from the original incision, I can also close a deep layer with a large number one vicral. I place a drain to evacuate any short term edema. We instructed him to remain in a hinged knee brace locked in extension, permitting walking with the brace locked. Six weeks after surgery, he demonstrated nice motion for the time period and a nice gait. We were impressed with how he moved, but learned it was partially because he actually had already danced at his daughter's wedding two weeks ago without telling us. At his most recent visit, eight months after surgery, his motion and mobility is so good it is hard to tell which of these mirrored videos is the injured knee.